Class Charlie Airspace. As defined in the AIM, Chapter 3-2-4, Class C airspace is generally that airspace from the surface up to 4,000 feet above the airport elevation, charted in MSL, surrounding those airports that have an operational control tower, are serviced by a radar approach control, and that have a certain number of IFR operations or passenger emplanements. Although the configuration of each Class C airspace is individually tailored, the airspace usually consists of a 5 nautical mile radius core surface area that extends from the surface up to 4,000 feet above the airport elevation and a 10 nautical mile radius shelf area that extends no lower than 1,200 feet up to 4,000 feet above the airport elevation. Just like Class D airspace, it is important to keep in mind that the size and shape of each Class C airspace will be designed to suit the needs of the airport in which it is surrounding. Class C, however, does have a typical layout that can be found throughout the national airspace system. As airspace becomes more complicated and larger, the shapes begin to change and are designed to encompass more area surrounding the primary airport. The typical layout of Class C is a two-layer design with the radius of the top or upper layer extending farther out than the lower or inner layer. The first layer starts at the surface surrounding the airport and will typically have a radius of 5 nautical miles and extend up to the top of the airspace which is typically 4,000 feet AGL. The next layer or shelf will start no lower than 1,200 feet above the ground and extend up to the same 4,000 feet AGL as the inner core. The top shelf will normally have a radius of 10 nautical miles. That's 10 nautical miles from the center of the airspace, so it will extend an additional 5 miles beyond the inner core. The no lower than 1,200 feet can be important since this altitude is what you will typically find, but it may vary. This altitude is often forgotten or confused, but remember that it is no lower than, so the top shelf will never start at any altitude below that. When we discuss the dimensions of class echo airspace and even IFR in route altitudes, this 1,200 feet will be seen again and you can start to see how they work together. If you are familiar with airways and low altitude RNAV routes, you might recall that they typically start at 1,200 feet above the ground. But again, that's another lesson. Now let's take a look at a couple examples. The first is a typical Class Charlie airspace surrounding Fort Wayne, Indiana. On a side note, remember that when we look at sectional charts, all altitudes are in MSL or above sea level unless otherwise noted. Okay, so Class C is defined on a sectional chart with magenta lines such as these surrounding Fort Wayne International Airport depicting an inner and outer ring surrounding the airport. The size and shape of Fort Wayne is that of a typical Class C airspace. As shown, it has two rings or shells that surround the primary airport. The inner ring has a radius of 5 nautical miles and begins at the surface with a ceiling of 4,800 feet MSL or above sea level. The ceiling is designated in uh, two digits which are hundreds of feet and a bottom in this case starting at the surface which is indicated by SFC. As we can see here the airport elevation is 815 feet MSL. If we take the 4,800 feet MSL ceiling minus the 800 foot airport elevation, which we did round, we can see the height of the Class C airspace is 4,000 feet above the ground level. The outer magenta ring displays the upper shelf of the airspace. When measured from the center of the airport, it has a radius of 10 nautical miles. And when we look at the elevation dimensions within this outer ring, we can see that the bottom of the shelf starts at 2,000 feet MSL, with the same ceiling of 4,800 feet MSL. Using the same math skills, we can take the 2,000 foot shelf altitude, which is above sea level, minus the airport elevation of 800 feet, and we can find the difference of 1,200 feet AGL. In this case, the upper shelf does not start until the defined no lower than 1,200 feet. 
When Class C does have a different configuration, more often than not, it does so to accommodate any overlying or surrounding airspace or airport. In many cases, particularly in high traffic areas where several larger airports are close to each other, different airports may have airspace that are close together. Now let's take a look at a Class C airspace that has its boundaries affected by other airports nearby and the surrounding geography. In this example, we will look at Louisville International Airport. When we look at the lateral boundaries of this Class Charlie, we can notice that the outer dimensions have the standard 10 nautical mile radius, but the inner 5 nautical mile ring is not uniform. Here we can see that the northeast corner cuts inward toward the primary airport in order to accommodate the nearby Bowman Airport. Let's take a look at the lower altitudes of the outer 10 nautical mile shelf that will start as quoted from the aim no lower than 1200 feet. On the southern portion outlined here we see the top of the airspace is 4500 feet MSL and the bottom of the shelf is 1,700 feet MSO. If we take the airport elevation of 501 feet and subtract that from the ceiling of 4,500, we get the top of the normal 4,000 feet AGL. When we compare the bottom of 1,700 feet with the airport elevation of 501, we come up with a lower limit of 1,200 feet above the ground. That seems pretty standard. Now let's take a closer look at the northern half of the outer shelf. We see the height of the same 4,500 feet, which is still 4,000 feet above the ground, but we can also see the bottom of this portion of the 10 nautical mile shelf is designated as 2,200 feet MSL. We subtract the airport elevation of 501 from the chart at 2,200, we see that this part of the airspace doesn't start until 1,700 feet above the airport surface, which is higher than the southern half of 1,200 feet. And if curious, we can look further and see that the northern half of the airspace has some tall obstacles that can be upwards of 1,000 feet MSL and higher, as well as the neighboring Bowman Airport's Class Delta airspace. These elements around the airport have caused Louisville's Class Charlie to start at a higher altitude. The important thing to note is that the airspace again is tailored to suit the needs of the primary airport and its surrounding conditions. Now that we understand the size and shape of Class Charlie airspace, let's take a look at what we as pilots need to consider before we plan to fly in or out of them. As we approach, land, or depart from a Class C airspace, there are a few requirements we must make sure we meet before doing so. To enter or operate within a Class C, no specific pilot certification is required. Any pilot, including a new student pilot, may operate within Class C. In regards to equipment, the aircraft must have an operable two-way radio. In addition, unless otherwise authorized by ATC, we must have an altitude reporting transponder. In most aircraft, this would be a Mode C or Mode S transponder. If we remember from the definition of Class C in the AIM, we know that Class C airspace is serviced by radar approach control. Since each Class C airport has their own radar capabilities, it makes sense that we must provide them with the information they need to fully take advantage of that radar, and in this case, we must have a transponder that will report our altitude. Not only is a transponder required to operate within a Class C, but we must also have one if we plan to fly above a Class C. We do not, however, need one if we plan to fly under the overlying shelf of the airspace. And when you think about it, this makes sense because if we were to fly over top of the airspace, ATC should know our altitude, since we could potentially fly directly over top of the airport. Without a Mode C transponder, the controller may only see our location and would have no indication if we were only a couple of feet above the airport or several thousand feet up. When we fly under the shelf, then an altitude reporting transponder is not needed since we will remain outside of the inner ring of that airspace. Also with this, we can fly in and out of any non-towered airports that may be under that shelf without the need to communicate with ATC. 
So the thing to remember is we need a mode C transponder to operate in or above a class Charlie airspace. Since a two-way radio is the other required equipment, it is no surprise that we must also use it. To enter or operate within class C, two-way radio communication must be established and maintained with ATC. When approaching a Class C, the pilot should contact the appropriate ATC or approach control on the published frequency with their position, altitude, radar beacon code, or in other words, transponder code if previously given one from another ATC facility, their destination, and request Class Charlie service. We should also initiate this contact with them far enough out to ensure we can establish our communication with the controller before entering the airspace. Here is an example. Four wing approach, November 1, 2, 3, 4, is 20 miles southwest, 5,500, squawking 1, 2, 0, 0. Inbound for Sierra Mike Delta, request transition of class Charlie with information uniform. So first off, how do we know that we can enter? Again, it's based on established two-way radio communication. How do we know we've done that? The determining factor is when the controller reads back the aircraft's tail number to the pilot. Here's an example. November 1, 2, 3, 4, four-way approach. Squawk 1514. Transition to the northeast approved. Maintain VFR at or above. Once ATC responds with your tail number, in this case, November 1, 2, 3, 4, then two-way radio communication has been established and we may enter the class Charlie. But what if ATC responds with November 1, 2, 3, 4, four-way approach, stand by. Are you allowed to enter? At this point, although no specific instructions were given by the controller, Two-way radio communication was established since the tail number was read back, and the pilot is permitted to enter the Class C airspace. However, even if two-way radio communication is established, but ATC instructs you to remain clear of the airspace, then obviously the pilot should stay outside of the Class Charlie until told to do so. Now that we have established two-way radio communication, and have an altitude encoding transponder that has been positively identified on ATC's radar, we will receive some basic aircraft separation. While in the Class C airspace, VFR traffic will be provided separation from IFR aircraft. It is important to understand that this is the only guaranteed separation. ATC is only required to provide separation for VFR aircraft from IFR aircraft. They will assist, when able, to keep VFR aircraft away from other VFR aircraft, but in the end, it is still up to the pilot operating under visual flight rules to maintain their own aircraft separation. Having said that, in order to stay under visual flight rules, we now have to consider our weather requirements. Within Class C airspace, basic VFR weather requirements are in place. In order for the airport to be considered VFR, there must be at least three statute miles visibility and 1,000 foot ceiling. While operating under VFR with at least three statute miles visibility, we must also remain 500 feet below, 1,000 feet above, and 2,000 feet horizontally from any cloud. We also have a speed restriction while operating close to a Class C airport. The FARs Part 91.117 state that unless otherwise authorized or required by ATC, no person may operate an aircraft at or below 2,500 feet above the surface within four nautical miles of the primary airport of a Class C or Class D airspace area at an indicated airspeed of more than 200 knots. So this restriction does not encompass all of the Class C airspace, 
but keep in mind that we do have a limit on our speed as we get close to that primary airport. In summary, Class C airspace has a two shelf or tier shape. The first layer starts at the surface and extends to 4,000 feet AGL with a radius of 5 nautical miles. The outer or upper shelf will begin no lower than 1,200 feet above the surface and extend up to 4,000 feet AGL. It will have a radius of 10 nautical miles from the center of the airspace. To operate within Class C, there is no specific pilot certification required. We do need a two-way radio with established two-way radio communication. In addition, we also need a Mode C or Altitude Encoding Transponder while operating in or above Class Charlie. We do not need this transponder when operating under the 10 nautical mile shelf. As a helpful reminder, this requirement is because Class C airports do have radar. While operating within the airspace, we need at least three statute miles visibility and must remain 500 feet below, 1,000 feet above, and 2,000 feet horizontally from any clouds. When we are 2,500 feet AGL or below, within four nautical miles of the primary airport, our speed is restricted to 200 knots indicated or less. Since the size and shape of each class Charlie can be individually tailored, it is important to check all resources including the current airport facility directory and aeronautical charts to determine the dimensions and altitudes of the airspace at each airport you plan to fly in or out of. Even though it is not as common, not all Class C airport control towers operate around the clock, so check the current AFD to know when the tower is operating. When the tower is closed, the Class C will normally revert to a Class Echo and that information can also be found in the airport facility directory.